Okay, we're back and we're live here at 5900 Arthur Street, high atop 5900 Arthur Street. And I'm making this video to say hello to my dirty dozen plus one friends and all the friends from Panama that are having a reunion here in a few days. It is currently October 8th, I believe. Yes, Monday, October 8th, Columbus Day. In a few days, all you guys are going to be gathered down there in Asheville, North Carolina and having a grand old time, and I really apologize that I could not make this one. Uh, Nancy just retired uh, a few months ago, and uh, the budget is very tight, and there's just some other things going on here that just would be make it very difficult uh, this time around. If you have another one, and maybe a little closer to Chicago, um, I would think about it, but... Uh, I, I just apologize that I can, could not make this one. I really tossed it around for a long time, but uh, had to turn it down. And I certainly hope you guys have a great time. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess I have to say hello to everybody that uh, might be there. Um, starting with the Dirty Dozen Plus One would be a Brad, Robert Bradley, a Chet, of course. Um, Hadoba, I don't know if you guys ever got a hold of him and uh, got him involved in this or not. I haven't been reading too many of the emails lately. Uh, myself, uh, Ken Laramore. I wonder if he's there. That uh, that was kind of a lost soul there for a while. Uh, Steve Nelson uh, from the UP. Edward Phipps, wonder if he made it down there. Hello to you. Big Al, I know you're there, big buddy. Uh, Jim Sheffield, you might be there. Uh, Grit, you might be there for a day or two. It's a little closer for you. Uh, Jack, of course, is gone. Uh, very sorry to hear about Jack's passing. He was uh, quite a character, and I'm sure everybody will miss him down there dearly. So now it's just down to the dirty dozen. Uh, Spoon, how could we ever possibly forget Spoon? And, of course, Carl Big Y. Um, I'm just reading this off of our old uh, draft uh, sheet that we drafted up this uh, certificate on uh, for the uh, Missouri thing. Uh, we were in Bremerhaven, Germany, Goleta Island, Winter Harbor, Maine, uh, Philippine Islands, and Vietnam, more or less, together. Um, it was probably the best four years of my life in one aspect. Really had uh, some great times down in the zone. Uh, everybody has their own take on that thing, their own experiences from it. And we all brought home a, a whole lot from that experience, and, and none, of, none of us, obviously, has, has ever really forgotten that. Uh, that's what's maintained this friendship uh, over the, the years and uh, keeps it in our head uh, floating around there constantly. I am always being reminded of my life in the zone in one aspect or another. I even have a picture up here. Uh, I'll take the camera off and focus it up there when we're done here, but I have a picture up there of the Gatun locks. Uh, that was taken by me uh, when I was down there. I just enlarged it to an 8x10, stuck it on a ham shack wall, and it's been there uh, since we've been here, uh, which is 15 years. We were in Hammond for 25 years, and then we moved here to Maryville, a little bit bigger land, and uh, I can stretch out a lot more antennas for my ham radio operation. So uh, it's worked out well. Uh, so hello to everybody. I, I, apparently this has turned into a pretty big deal, and it's not just the Dirty Dozen Plus One anymore. Um, and so hello to the guys that I've been seeing on Facebook and everything. My name is George Kelly, uh, CT2 from 1960, well, Navy from 1965 to 1969, and the Canal Zone from 1966 to 1968. Um, I've already apologized for not making, but wrote up myself a little script here. Uh, I know what's going to happen down there. We're going to get together. You're going to get together and go over some of the best memories. So I thought I'd jotted a few of those down. Um, let's see. Off of the top of my head, just when I was writing notes the other night, uh, I'll never forget the time when I was in the EM club, um, probably smashed, and I was looking at the jukebox, and um, uh, Jose Feliciano was uh, popular at the time. And I forget the, the name of the uh, the record he was uh, head out at the time. Um, but I, I looked at the thing and I said, it's Jose Florentino. And Brad, of course, being the smart man that he is, said, no, that's Feliciano, you idiot. 
Okay, that was one uh, outstanding memory. Another one is the bus rides. <laughs> Those bus rides out to the the site were uh, were incredible. Uh, 50 guys riding in a bus, or 30 guys, whatever it was, riding in a bus. Uh, half of us always smashed <laughs> and uh, screaming at the top of our lungs. Uh, no one was allowed to fade. No one was allowed to sleep or catch any winks on the way out. And... Uh, Possibly on the way back, I can't remember, but uh, definitely on the way out. You could not fade prior to your watch. So if anyone was caught sleeping uh, while on that bus ride out to the site, everybody would gang up on him, uh, get into his face, and say, No fading! Uh, so that was, that was kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, downtown. Well, obviously, there's a million memories from downtown Kalan. Uh, uh, one of the favorites, of course, being uh, the Z and, uh, and Front Street and all that stuff. Um, it's amazing how that place really hasn't changed all that much. I've been watching those pictures coming up from Alan Hawkins. And some of that stuff, just it's like time stops down there. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, breakers, big memory from the Breakers. Uh, we had a, uh, a Frank Sinatra impersonator. Uh, here this summer at uh, one of the park concerts, and he did a fantastic job. I mean, you could close your eyes and, and really visualize that guy was Frank Sinatra. And uh, he played uh, Summer Wind, and boy, did that ever take me back to uh, to the Breakers. Uh, remember many times sitting there on that balcony out there listening to good old Frank Snot's uh, Summer Wind and uh, watching Al or somebody get in a battle with LaRue or somebody over there. That was always a lot of fun. Breakers was was a big deal, and not only for us, but for a lot of generations that came before the thing finally burned down, I guess. Uh, the Portobello trip, uh, Chet and uh, myself, I can't remember who else was on that, but we took a bus ride up to Portobello, or not the, uh, not Portobello, I'm sorry, David and Boquete. Uh, the the David and Boquete thing was uh, pretty neat with you, Chet. Um, that's always an outstanding memory for me. Uh, those were good times. We talked about that on the phone a little while ago. Uh, the Portobello trip, of course. Um, and I'm going to send you some, some websites. There is traffic in there. We talked about is there cars in there, and yes, there are. I thought I remember that from seeing uh, um, Alan Hawkins' uh, videos of the place and pictures. And there are cars. There's a major road into Portobello. I mean, we're talking 50 miles an hour road into Portobello now. So I'll send you those uh, those links and let you take a look at that. Uh, another big memory was football in the field down there on one muddy rainy night. A bunch of us got together and played uh, football, tag football, in the muddy field out there and got sopping wet and we didn't even, we couldn't even recognize us when we were done with that. Uh, and of course operating uh, the, uh, the ham station, KZ5NG, that was uh, a big thing down there. Nice way to talk home and uh, play ham radio if you're a ham radio operator. I still go uh, through a lot of those memories every time I meet somebody or playing uh, DX or something or uh, we're talking about our uh, old duty stations and ham stations and stuff. Still talk about the zone a lot. That was a big thing back down there and certainly we're uh, very grateful that the Navy had uh, uh, supplied us with such an excellent station. And uh, every so often I used to run across the uh, Collins S line in, in uh, Hamfest and stuff like that. Got a friend that's got a 200 foot um, cement tower in, uh, in Laporte, uh, an AT&T tower, and his first floor is a ham shack. And he's got all this vintage equipment, and one of them is the uh, Collins S line and the uh, floor model linear, just like we had down there, and it really, really takes you back. Uh, let's see, what else I got here? Oh, getting a tan out there. The old baby oil and iodine trick laying out there uh, by that hangar trying to get a suntan. Uh, that tan is apparently still with me because this year when we went down to Florida, uh, it didn't take long for it to get back to that level. A couple of days and I was back to that level. So that canal zone tan must be just hanging in there. But uh, that was always fun, uh, going out there and uh, laying out in the sun and uh, getting a nice tan for coming back on leave in the middle of winter time. Um, what's going on with me now? I know that conversation will come up down there with you guys. Uh, I am currently 67 years old. Been retired five and a half years from AT&T in Chicago. I uh, had a great 37-year career. Uh, it had its ups and downs, but uh, it 
did well by me and uh, very happy to be retired. It's, uh, it's just a pleasure not to go to work anymore and not to deal with uh, some of the personalities and problems that you can run into with big corporations. It's just a pleasure to get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee and a fiber bar and do what you want to do. Uh, even though we're broke as heck, we still get to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And that's, that's, that's been fun and I certainly hope uh, it goes on for a number of years yet. I feel reasonably healthy. Um, as far as health goes, I know that's going to be, everybody going to be talking about their arthritis. So let's see what's happened to me. Um, I had West Nile shortly after I retired and that was kind of fun. <laughs> Spent about six months trying to recuperate from that. People die from that, and I was one of the lucky ones that did not die from it. Um, it took about six months before I finally got back to normal, and I didn't have to go in the hospital, really. It was just stay home and take it easy, but it really it made you feel like a wet dish rag all day long, and uh, I was having all kind of uh, skin problems with it and headaches and... Uh, uh, the doctor told me just go get some herbs and uh, get your immune system built up and that's what I did and uh, it took care of it. Uh, after West Nile came um, spinal fusion. Uh, I had spinal fusion surgery in 2011. My back was getting to be a real mess. I've always had a bad back for 40 years and it was getting really nasty so I had to have uh, L4 and 5 fuse right by the tailbone down there. And that fixed everything. It was like it, it was like the difference between night and day uh, with the pain level. It was like gone. I had the greatest summer of my life. I put 800 miles on my bicycle. I do a lot of bicycling in the summer to keep reasonably in shape. And at the end of that summer, on November 1st, the very my very last ride, I got whacked by a car. I was pulling into a, uh, a Dairy Queen. Uh, uh, I was driving by a, uh, riding by a Dairy Queen drive-in, and uh, the uh, car was coming in the driveway, and we just met right dead center, and she just knocked me right off my bike. So that's created a big problem. I'm in pain 80% of the day, and I can't walk very far anymore. I can do a couple of blocks, and uh, I really have to sit down somewhere and just kind of pack it in. We're still working on this, but I think I'm stuck with that level right now. It's not going to be a pretty picture for a while. Uh, but I'm still kicking. Got a note here that says I'm still kicking, so I guess I am. Uh, my family life, uh, still married to Nancy. We just crossed our 40th anniversary uh, this month, last month, September 23rd. Uh, still uh, enjoying each other immensely. We have one son. He is now 31 years old and still living with us. Works for UPS. And uh, for the most part, he's on his own, except for when he needs money from me. So that's worked out okay. Um, what else? Uh, this is my ham shack that you're seeing here. Uh, this is where I spend a lot of my time uh, between this and uh, biking uh, in the summertime. Uh, I have a lot of beautiful bike trails in here and uh, I do a lot of bicycling in the summertime. So I think that's about all I can think of. Uh, Chad asked me to make this little video, and uh, I thought it was a good idea as well. A little cameo appearance from yours truly. The Geo, the great GK, canine WWT. Oh, yes, let's do this. Canine WWT. And uh, if John Thrower catches this, or I may ship it to him in email, I just happen to find this in my uh, Canal Zone folder. Uh, KZ5JO, that was um, John Thrower's QSL card from, uh, from the Canal Zone. So guys, I hope you have a great time down there. I'm sure you will. If you get by Chicago Way, give me, give me a, a, a ring. Uh, I'm okay on, uh, on email there. And uh, just uh, give me a holler and we'll get together. Uh, I've uh, met up with uh, Carl a few times and I'd be happy to meet up with anybody else that wants to come through here. And if you have another reunion near Chicago somewhere, you can count me in. Uh, this one was just a little too far away and, like I say, a little difficult to get to this time around. But uh, certainly we'll miss you guys. I hope you have a great time down there, and, uh, and we'll be seeing you. Uh, fair winds to all you sailors out there, and uh, 73s to the hams. Goodbye, guys. Have a good time.